first year of uh, search engine marketing at uh, Flipkart. Uh, the platform, uh, as you know, is called Simbuzz. Uh, search engine marketing, uh, how many of you uh, understand? I know Tarun has already uh, told what is the, te what the term is about, but uh, not the term, but what are the mechanics behind it? So tell me, please. Um, it's all about ads that uh, Tarun has already clarified, right? But uh, let's say you uh, enter a search query. So how does Google decide uh, which domains add to show? Or let's say um, 10 domains qualify. How does Google decide that uh, which domains add to show on the top of the page or which domains add to show on page 2 versus bottom of the page on let's see? So how does it uh, decide? So any guesses? Uh, this is clear, right, that this is a paid search volume. You need to pay for every click that the user gets. So one obvious thing would be that the higher amount you pay, the better uh, your ranking becomes, the better you appear on top of the page. Uh, that is one factor, but apart from that, there are a host of other factors. Uh, one major one being quality score. And quality score is again driven by uh, a lot of factors, uh, some of them being, uh, let's say, how relevant your uh, ad is to what you're landing on, which we call the landing page. Or then how attractive or how um, relevant is your ad copy itself? Or maybe how many users are finding it attractive and clicking on it? So as and when more users click on your ad, your quality score increases. So uh, all these factors uh, together determine what is your overall quality score at every level, at keyword level, at ad group level, and then ad groups are then again um, themed or grouped into something what, what we call as a campaign, right? So um, now, uh, like quality score was one factor which, uh, yeah. So uh, Google knows it by uh, observing user behavior. So click-through rate is one, um, one metric that determines how relevant your uh, ad is to your score, uh, to your uh, landing page plus Google uh, has the whole content of the page, right? So it can match that uh, whether your keywords are actually uh, making sense for that page. Obviously, it doesn't do it in runtime, but uh, uh, when, pardon? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, so then uh, finally, uh, quality score and C uh, CPC. So CPC is the cost per click. These two factors majorly uh, drive your ad rank, and it's a direct uh, multiplication of these two factors. So um, it's a very simple math here that higher your quality score, the lesser you have to bid to get to the uh, same ad rank. So I've taken an example here. Let's say a uh, user is searching for um, Flipkart books. Okay, I'm uh, intentionally taking Flipkart here because the example here uh, drives in the point that uh, the quality score can be different for different landing pages. So for Flipkart.com, Flipkart keyword will have a higher quality score because you have it in the domain name, in the URL, in all over the page you have Flipkart, right? So for Flipkart.com, Flipkart keyword will be having a very high quality score, which means that we can afford to bid really low on Flipkart keyword. But let's say another website, dummy.com, has to uh, bid on Flipkart books, right? So, which means in that case, they'll have to bid really, really high to get to the same ad rank, right? So, uh, this is how roughly the ad rank gets calculated. How much you ultimately end up paying uh, to Google uh, is a factor of ad rank plus other factors which, uh, which we will not discuss in this uh, presentation. So, uh, now I'll talk about uh, the challenges that we started out with when uh, we uh, built this platform. So uh, here we have two ad copies. Uh, the search term here was by Angel of the Dash, which is a book title, right? So here you see two ads. One is, uh, one has more details. Let's say, uh, I'm not sure if it is visible at the back, but it has the discount at that particular point in time. The other is a competitor ad, which is more or less generic. It doesn't have any uh, discount or price or anything like that. So um, we wanted to get to this level where uh, for every
every product, every SKU that we have, we uh, have a targeted ad for this uh, for this product. So that's uh, what the thing is. Um, again, um, here uh, what we see is that uh, the x-axis is the number of keywords, the y-axis is the number of uh, the search volume for that keyword. The point here is that, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, the everything here is determined by bids, right? So how high up in the uh, on the search results page you appear depends on your bid, which means that uh, the popular keywords or the generic keywords will have a lot of competition, right? So generic keywords means single word keywords or say books, mobiles, computers, some very generic or broad keywords. Uh, they'll uh, in the graph, you can see that those are the keywords uh, which we call as the fat head or the uh, majority or the top head keywords, and they will drive almost 80% of the traffic. So this is called the 80-20 rule. So 20% of keywords are driving 80% of your traffic. Right. So uh, like I mentioned, uh, these are high traffic volume keywords, and everyone will be bidding on them, and you'll be paying a lot of uh, money to be able to get traffic for those keywords. If I take, let's say, Samsung Galaxy S3, so peop, there will be people who will be bidding on Galaxy in a different context, right? But Samsung Galaxy S3 as a phrase would be a very niche phrase which only e-commerce sites would be bidding on. So that is the thing there. Uh, then we come to uh, another challenge, which is keeping the campaigns in sync. By that, what I mean is that uh, Let's say your product on your website goes out of stock. You don't want to spend money on bidding for that product, uh, keywords related to that product. Or maybe let's say all products in a brand go out of stock. You don't want to continue bidding on that brand because you are wasting that time. So any too many of these uh, low search volume keywords in our campaigns, it was pulling down the quality score of the other um, campaigns as well. So uh, we quickly rolled it back and came up with a different structure which was much more optimized and much more traffic generation. So yeah, so when you have a uh, platform, you have the capability of uh, quickly providing those things. Yes, so, yes. So Google penalizes you for being a uh, bad traffic generator. At every level, so let's say if your key, uh, a bunch of keywords is pulling down your quality score, it will affect your campaign, right? If it, if your camp, uh, multiple campaigns do this, it will pull down your account. If you do it at an account level, it will pull down all your related accounts. So it's a, um, the, the whole hierarchy gets affected. So it's not a immediate thing that uh, you won't see it in real time, but over let's say a few weeks, you will observe a pattern that your quality score is gradually degrading. So then you'll, yes, so you can at any time query Google at a keyword level, uh, you can figure out what is your quality score. Yes. Okay, we are almost out of time. So yeah, uh, bid management, uh, like I said, this is the crux of the whole system uh, because that, uh, that actually drives to what you end up paying to Google, right? So if you don't set your bids right, you can end up burning the entire daily budget in a matter of seconds. So if you have a very high traffic volume keyword, it will just simply burn out all your budget. So you have to be very, be very prudent while setting the bids. Um, okay, so with all these challenges and all these uh, uh, things in mind, we finally had the goals for the platform. I'll quickly go over the goals and the high level architecture. Um, okay. so. The first thing we needed was a DSL for creating these campaigns. So we wanted to externalize the content part or the how we create the campaign from the code or the platform part. So for instance, the business folks could define that uh, this is a template and this needs to be filled in with say brand or vertical or category. So that uh, domain specific language is uh, something that even business folks can use to define these templates. So this was uh, one goal. Uh, for which uh, we used Scala as a language for uh, the platform because it enables you to define DSLs in a very uh, convenient way. Uh, build with support failure management, this is very obvious because we are dealing with the network, uh, services are bound to fail. 
horizontally scalable. Again, uh, if you have a big catalog, it has to be scaled out. Uh, L and one important piece is uh, ability to execute rules. So uh, again, so the business folks keep experimenting with different strategies. Like Tarun mentioned, in one month, their strategy could be uh, drive traffic. In another month, it could be drive uh, the maximum return on inv investment. Accordingly, your bids, the strategy to set bids can change. And thus, we wanted to keep the rule or def definition part out of the platform. So for this, uh, with all these goals, we have finally this platform. Uh, here you see all the internal services that we talked with. This is the website, uh, your internal search services, catalog services, recommendation services. All these feed into the Sinbad platform. Um, they, uh, the Sinbad platform uh, has a fr front end control which business folks use to define templates, to define rules, to define uh, various other things. Uh, we have a network API integration uh, level. Uh, right now we are just uh, advertising on Google and we have just started out with Facebook. Uh, at the data layer, we have uh, XBase for the metrics and uh, MongoDB for metadata. And then we have this business layer, which uh, has different components here. Uh, campaign management, this is essentially uh, template driven. So we have a template engine, which is Scala based. Bid management is primarily right now rule driven. So we have rules as the rule engine. Um, the work in progress here is to make it more intelligent so that uh, business folks don't define the rules. The platform infers the rules itself. And then keyword discovery and uh, keyword discovery from multiple uh, data sources. So like I mentioned, long tail is the ultimate goal. So to be able to mine all those keywords from different data sources, that is the job of keyword discovery. And then uh, rule management. I'll uh, wrap it up here. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Okay, one question only. Good, more questions.